Hello, entrepreneurial fans, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeffrey Davis, and we continue to stream stories of entrepreneurship, leadership, and organizational transition during these extraordinarily complicated times during a massive reset of our economy. Uh, our next guest is Eamon O'Kane, sorry, uh, CEO, uh, and uh, Chris Tenalia, COO of Valiant. Uh, welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, tell us about Valiant. Thank you for having us on the show. So we were actually on your show about, what, three years ago now? About that, yeah. Um, um, Look we a were, little familiar. Yeah, we were in the, uh, talking about just the, you know, where we're, where we're at, where we're going and where we're headed. Uh, back then we were, uh, I think, in three states. And now we're in all cannabis legal states. We're actually into an international market. We're also in, in Europe. Uh, we're having active chats in Thailand and Greece at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're all over the place and we're uh, it's like a rapid expansion despite COVID and the economic reshuffle. Um, I'll let Chris talk a little about, you know, the states that we're actually working in at the moment. Right and now, there's been a lot of transition in your industry, but you guys continue to be strong. So I'm going to be interested to hear, you know, how you were able to do that despite others' inability. <laughs> One thing that differentiates us than anybody else in the industry is that we 100% specialize in cannabis. Um, this, is, we, this is all we do. This is all we know. We have strategic alliances with um, different architects, engineers, other groups, distributors throughout the, the industry, and we work in multiple states. So right now we're in California, Colorado, Nevada, Washington State, uh, New York State's coming right on along, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, Florida. We're in um, multiple states throughout the country. Um, and that's what really kind of differentiates us than other uh, construction companies throughout the country is that we know the different environments and the different ways that you have to build a facility in order for you to be successful and to make sure your product passes all the tests. Well, it's got to be a lot simpler than what you just said. I get, give you credit. Uh, I do know a lot of people got into your category. This wasn't their expertise. You clearly saying you built expertise and the, the lack of expertise hurt them and they got out. Is there anything else in particular that you think makes your facilities special to you? Well, you have to stay with the trend. You know, there's a lot of technology out there. It's forever moving. I can give you an example of uh, lighting. Lighting changes basically every single year. Every show you go to, there's new vendors. That, that has never stopped. Uh, but the technology is coming along. And if you, you have to stay with the technology um, and even on the uh, sustainable market, you know, sustainable products, there's a lot more people asking for those types of products going forward. Uh, what we're noticing is at the moment, because of the technological jump, we're actually retrofitting a lot more. Like, for example, California is going through a reshuffle in their state where the people that were in first are now uh, retrofitting their facilities. Uh, some of them are becoming from illegal to legal. Uh, so that always helps. Um, we're also seeing a great demand for economic, uh, for sustainable products. So and we're very big with the sustainability of a growth facility. Um, so we're finding that a lot of people are coming back to the table uh, after they've got their initial product built and they're saying, okay, we're not happy with this, this, and this. But because we have stayed ahead with the technology and the materials, we can actually have a, a, a really good discussion with them, introduce them to unbelievable architects and engineers that have followed the trend as well. Um, we have like uh, strategic partnerships with different groups. You know, we have uh, Greenlight, who is a supplier for all products from what chillers right through to lights, basically, yep. and fertigation yep. equipment. Right through, we also offer funding to people that uh, are, you know, thinking about this. Um, because they're thinking about it, we actually have people that we can help advise to make sure that they can secure their funding so they have a successful grow in the future. Uh, the likes of Suite 420 and 420 Access. Um, then we have like, you know, other smaller groups like Grow IQ that can do, you know, measure all their met met metrics and keep the, the facility pumping out at 100%. So 
So well, it's amazing. You have all these um, strategic partnerships uh, that you put together, which seems to be a competitive advantage. Can you tell me a little bit more about your philosophy with that on how you put that together? So what the philosophy that we have is sustainability um, through start to finish. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, cultivation facilities across the country were enormous energy sucks. There was a a lot of the we, the first podcast that we did with you, we talked about some of the um, more efficient technologies that we use, that you can use uh, cogen systems and use natural gas to turn it into electricity. But there's other ways to, to be more sustainable, um, specifically in some of the states that we're working in, which is California, Nevada, Colorado, places that the water consumption is uh, very high and it's very expensive. So there's ways to put in water reclamation systems, uh, reverse osmosis chambers and different ways to be able to use the water in your facility from the condensate lines right through to the water that comes right off the plants to be able to reuse those and drop the costs of the facility by enormous amounts and then also save the environment, which I don't know if you've taken a trip over to Nevada lately, but the Lake Mead is down to absolutely nothing and it's actually kind of tragic. So those types of things that keep us, our strategic alliances in line. A lot of architects and engineers, yes, sometimes it is more expensive to do that, but you have to find somebody like us that can actually take that technology, find the proper contractors, consultants, and everybody that can actually install it properly in the facilities and make them all work and produce the proper product without having these massive energy sucks that was that was before. Well, I mean, it's not unusual for me to go to meetings with uh, different industries than yours and have the marijuana industry come up in a conversation, strategic conversations. Uh, where do you see the industry going in the next two to five years? Because clearly it's been in a big transition. You're growing. Uh, what are your plans for the future and what do you see? Our plans, uh, we definitely, wherever uh, cannabis and marijuana is going to show up, we're going to show up. So whatever states become legal, we're definitely going to be there. Uh, we're actually actively looking for uh, con uh, contracting companies in different states that we don't ha have a license at the moment you know, to work with so they can take over that state with us. Um, so we're still expanding. Um, we see that we're actually just really getting started. We thought whenever we first talked to you three years ago that we were really on our way. Now we've realized that we're really only just getting started. Uh, it's the industry is getting more and more regulated. It's getting more and more interest in the technologies there now. Um, it's a lot of fun because there's, there's so much, it changes nearly every single day. There's new methods. Um, so we try to stay ahead of the game with, with all those, like anybody that comes into the market with a new method of growing. Uh, we try to uh, find out as much about that particular method and see if it is actually sustainable or is it going to work in the cannabis space. So uh, for now, we just, we're still going to have active talks with big agriculture, uh, especially in Europe at the moment. Um, from there, we're going to segue into cannabis because, as I say, Europe's a little slower than America to adopt, but we're definitely going to be there for sure. Um, so, Are you in Canada at all? No. No. We, we, we went to Canada, actually. <laughs> we tried a couple of times to go there, but it, it, it's a different market. It's a very different market up there. I know it is. Yes. <laughs> uh, but to answer the rest of your question with um, – with the where we're going to the future, we see that there's a, a huge opportunity in the more federally regulated spaces with um, the GMP regulated labs and things like that. So there's a, a, a more of a shift to the professional, more professional um, environment coming along. So it's not um, people throwing together some of the, the black market situations that they that they were in before, where you're you're building a facility just to get a couple of crops going. These are more for longevity. And that's where we're, like you mentioned, it's really exciting. And we're starting to build some of these state of the art labs and state of the art um, cultivation facilities that are built to last. And it's a lot of fun. Very interesting. Uh, I wish we had more time. I we'll have you back on again. We're not going to wait a few years this time. Um, <laughs> if someone's looking for you or Valiant, uh, the car my father drove when I was a little child, uh, one of my favorite TV shows too from uh, Great Britain. Uh, mm -hmm. How would they find you? Best way to find us would be on our website, which is valiant-america.com. Um, you that has all of our information on it. There's a submission log on there. You can call our, our phone number, um, and somebody will get back to you right away within the same day. 
and we'll That's be able to help you out with all the different procedures that we talked about throughout the show. Well, if we're talking entrepreneurship, this is Radio Entrepreneurs, and you guys are definitely entrepreneurs. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and we will follow with more stories.